Hey everybody, um, this is a uh, part two of my recording on um, how to smoke some brisket and some pork loin. Uh, last night I went over um, you know, applying the rub, trimming the meat, uh, that kind of thing. Tonight uh, is where I'm going to show you how to uh, get the, uh, the, the coal started um, without lighter fluid. I do not use lighter fluid at all when I, when I smoke meat. I'll use lighter fluid, you know, in a regular you know, Weber grill to make hamburgers, but never to smoke meat. It just, uh, to me, it adds a flavor that you just don't want in your smoked meat. Um, we'll also go over uh, injecting the meat, putting the meat on the smoker, getting the uh, smoker up to the right temp, you know, before you do that. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my coals going. Like I said, I use a, a, a chimney. Um, to get my coals going, and the best way to use one of these things, and I really recommend getting a good one. Don't go cheap on something like this because I've learned the hard way that going cheap, they don't work as well. You know, this one I got a real decent uh, Weber um, uh, chimney starter, and it has done a great job for me. I really like it. So anyway, uh, anyway, take some uh, some newspaper, kind of separate it all out to the individual pages, and then I like to have it long ways like this and then what I do is I, I'm going to roll up the sheet and basically you're going to step it in here kind of walk it around the outside you don't want to pack it too tight otherwise the flame's going to go out on you but you want to get enough paper in there to sustain it uh, so the coals can get going um, basically the, the effect I'm going for here is I'm going to wrap it right around the outside, put another layer on the inside, but I want to leave an opening in the center there which will help promote airflow to get the uh, uh, coals uh, really going well. So let me just roll all these up. You don't have to roll them really tight, just real quick like that. I do like to leave the newspaper in kind of the double sheet way there before I roll it up. Okay. And then we're going to turn on the inside here. Doesn't have to be pretty, but just a few layers. As you can see though, I am leaving the center part open. I don't want to uh, stuff any paper down there. It's kind of dark in here. I apologize if you can't see that. <clears throat> this is only a single one. I'm going to do one more around the outside here and then I'll be done. Doing today's Chicago Tribune, reading about how the Bears finally got a GM. I really don't know a whole lot about this guy, but anybody's better than him, right? Get all that kind of stuff in there. Flip that over. And then you put coals in. Uh, don't fill the coals all the way to the very top. You want to probably fill it up maybe about three quarters, maybe just a little bit more. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, charcoal in here and then we're going to go outside, light it, and uh, get the coals going. Alright, so I'm outside. I'm going to shut this door here so the smoke doesn't get on the inside. Hope it's not too windy out here. It's pretty windy out here, but I got this uh, right up against the door to try to block some of the wind. So basically, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, go around the outside here, light the paper, and then it should uh, keep a fire going there a little ways, and then get these coals going.
Okay, so you can see now it's really starting to get going there. Smoke really good. So I'll close this door so smoke doesn't get inside the garage. And we're gonna let that go probably about, probably let that go here probably about five, 10 minutes, probably 10 minutes. And then I'll show you what to look for so that you know your coals are ready to pour uh, onto the other coals that you should have already had kind of piled up in the smoker. So we'll be back here in about 10 minutes. Okay, well we're back outside here and we're gonna go check these coals with this wind. It's probably gonna go a little quicker. Um, and there we have, that's exactly what you're looking for to know that your coals are pretty much ready to go be put on your smoker when you start seeing those flames. You know, not a whole lot of smoke with all those flames dancing up on the outside like that. That's exactly what you want. So now it's time to take these inside and put in my smoker. Alright. So I'm going to pour this into the smoker, the firebox. As you can see, it's had a good pile uh, in there already, and then the started coals on top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the that the side here is open, so it's getting air. And we're going to close this top. Make sure. Your exhaust here is full open so you can get the uh, airflow going in and then just get this temperature up. Um, I'm doing this right you know, about a couple hours you know, before I actually put the meat on here because I just want to make sure that the um, that the, the temperature is stabilized in there, gone to where I, where I want it. Uh, like I said, we'll be cooking this at 225. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get it up to about 250 or so because you want to have it a little warmer than what you're going to cook with because you're going to be putting, you know, a lot of cold meat on there which is going to lower your temperature. So you want, I want to get it about 250. I want it to be able to sustain 250 and then we'll get the meat on. So I will uh, uh, see you back here shortly. Um, the next step that we have is to bring the the meat out and start injecting it but we'll do that when we get a little closer to uh, putting it on the smoker. See you in a bit. Hey everybody. Alright it's time to do the injection. I've got the brisket out. The pork loin is not going to be done until way later uh, but it's about 8.39. I plan on putting this brisket uh, on the smoker about 10 o'clock um, but I wanted to kind of get up to room temperature you know as close as I can anyway and, before I put on the smoker, so I bring it out a little early. I'm gonna go ahead and inject it now. So let's go ahead and open these things. This here is my injection. Um, if you want the recipe for uh, my injection, just shoot me an email. I'll be happy to give it to you. Um, there's a lot of recipes out there. Most of them are pretty much all like beef stock based, you know, especially for brisket. Um, one thing I, I like to do to kind of bump it up a little bit because I really want to enhance the uh, the beef flavor is to use beef base. Uh, so I highly recommend getting this and putting a couple tablespoons in whatever injection you, you decide to use for brisket because it really just, you know, infuses beef flavor into that meat so that, you know, during the cooking time you don't lose that. So I, I really like that stuff and I've had a lot of uh, good success with that. So this is my injection. I'm going to just kind of put this over here for right now. So let's go ahead and unwrap these. I like to, um, if you remember, I uh, put the rub on last night. So, and they've been kind of sitting in the rug all night. I put them in two foils, or two layers of foil, so it's two layers they look like tonight. Fast side up. I'm gonna keep it that way so that I remember where, uh, how I want to put it on the smoker. But this is what it looks like coming out of the foil. <clears throat> All right. 
And now we're going to go ahead and inject. I like to use a little more heavy duty of a injector. Um, you can find these at pretty much any you know, grocery store, Bed Bath Me Out, whatever. Uh, I don't like to use the real flimsy plastic one because they just don't work good, but these do. Uh, one thing I also recommend when you make your injection, before you get to the point of injecting it, I would run it through a strainer. Like this. Um, so that way it kind of filters out all large pieces that might possibly clog up your <clears throat> And trust me, I've learned that one the hard way. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get to injecting. There's all different kinds of ways of doing this, the way I like to do it. You know, you'll see some people, you know, it's all about you doing a checker pattern on, on the front part of me. I like to actually infuse it on the sides. I'll still hit the top, but not as much as some folks. Are. I like to get it on the sides. So. Go ahead and inject. You kind of want to put it all the way in, and then as you're pushing the injection in, kind of pull out. <clears throat> kind of do this several times. It's not real rocket science or anything, you just want to make sure you're kind of getting good coverage. You're going to get some that's going to leak out. That's alright, just kind of be gentle when you push because sometimes it will spray back at you, make a big mess, so you want to avoid that. <clears throat> So now I'm going to go ahead and start doing the top. Oops. I don't think I'm doing a little more needle here because I still got three pieces of meat. Alright, so that's pretty much all there is to injecting, and basically I'm going to inject the rest of my meat, I'm going to cover them, let them set, and I'm going to put them on, it's about 841 now, so I'll be putting these on my smoker here in about an hour, 20 minutes or so, so I will get you back in. Thanks. Alright, so I got all my meat uh, all injected, we're not going to use all my injector, but I did make quite a bit uh, of it, so it's, uh, that's alright. Um, <clears throat> got all injected, but like I said the last time, I'm going to put a little more rub on these, let them set, kind of get up to um, a little bit more temperature to them, to where they're not so cold being put on the smoker. It's about 5 till 9, so I'm going to go ahead and put the rub on, then I'm going to go out and check my smoker to see, you know, make sure that my temp is remaining constant. So, let's go ahead and start putting the rub on this. Again, just like, I'm not going to do the layering on this, I just want to add a little bit more of this Texas rub. <clears throat>
I want to go ahead and get that back to that side up so that I know where I'm, my orientation when I'm out on the smoker. Alright, so I'm going to finish putting the row down these. I'm going to uh, just kind of cover them in foil. And then I'll see uh, how it'll smoke when I put these things on the smoker. Hey everybody, um, back out here. It's about just about 10 o'clock, about 4 minutes till. It's about time to go ahead and put the, uh, the biggest cuts of meat that I have on the smoker. So we'll go ahead and unwrap those and get these on real quick. on here. Pull the foil off and see what this thing looks like. Hopefully I can do this without dropping out of speed on the ground because that would totally suck. Alright, so right now my smoker is about 250 which is not where I'm going to cook at, but it's where I want it right before I put the meat, the you know, the cold meat on. Because when you put the meat on, it's going to drop that temperature, but hopefully not too much below where I want to uh, keep it cooked. So the key to this is just opening it, putting it on quickly, and getting it back closed. Just so you can see the. Uh piece of meat that I'm going to be putting on. Check that out. It's a beautiful color in there. Exactly what you want. Pop this baby on. Close that down. I'll have one more piece to. Beautiful color in this. I'll definitely nail that one. Back up. Again, I'm putting fat side up so that way that fat can rinse down. And I'm gonna close that puppy back down. Alright, so during all that, my temperature dropped down to under 200. So, what I'm gonna do is just kind of Play with my exhaust here. Maybe put a little bit more wood, get that temperature back up just a little bit. And where I'm wanting to keep it is right around 220, 225. I'm gonna mop this about every hour. Um, and what a mop is, it's just a kind of like you're basting a turkey. You're basting the uh, the, the brisket. Uh, and the reason why they call it mop because the tool they use almost looks like a mop head. Um, matter of fact, I've used a small mop head when I've done this before. But so I'll mop about every hour, keep track of it. 
And then after about four hours on the smoke, and that's really about all I want on the smoke, I'm going to wrap it. And then I'm going to cheat. You know, if you're in competition, you, you know, definitely cook the entire process on your smoker. I'm at home tonight, so I'm going to take advantage of my oven inside. When I go to wrap it, I'm going to take it into the oven, 220 the rest of the night, and then it'll be done 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, of which time I'll take it out and then let it rest before it gets served tomorrow. So I will be back out here shortly to put the smaller cuts on. Um, you guys don't need to worry about seeing that. And so the next time you see me will be when I inject the pork a little later, later on tonight, early this morning. Thanks a lot. Okay, so it's been about an hour since I put the first uh, couple of uh, larger cuts on. So now it's time to put the um, uh, cut that's only about a pound less on uh, on the smoker now. And then I'm also going to mop the the first two and then close it up. And then I'll come back and check in, in another hour, do another mopping and all that. But So right now I'm going to mop and then put another cut on the smoker. When I said before, you know, one reason why it's called a mop, because here's a tool to use. It almost looks like a mop. <laughs> so this is my uh, mop mixture that I use. If you want the recipe for this, um, just shoot me an email and I'll be happy to send it to you. It's got uh, got some onion in there. It's got some uh, some of the rub. It's got quite a few different things in there. So just kind of put this on liberally. Liberally. But I can't talk. It's too late. Just kind of, you're trying to just try to keep it moist. That's all I need to do. We're gonna close that up. Let that heat build back up. Stoke the fire here a little bit just so that I can get that temperature back up because I dropped having the lid open for that long I dropped all the way down to right around 150 so I want to try to kick this back up a little bit. So I'm gonna open up my dampers a little bit. So I'm going to let that temperature get back up and I'm going to close the dampers a little bit and let it steady out. If you're wondering what this here is, this is actually a, a, um, a blanket for a water heater that I put around my smoker to help give it the insulation to maintain that temperature better. And it does a great job. I tell you what, before I started using this, you know, my temperature spikes would be up and down all over the place. It was like full-time job just maintaining this. With this on... Um, you get your temperature right about where you want it and it maintains it for a while so you don't have to check it nearly as often so if you go out and get a smoker I recommend investing in something like this so when, uh, when my temperature gets back up I'm going to close the dampers a little bit make sure it stays and then I will um, be back in a little bit to do some more mopping and throw on I'll hear another couple hours throw on the last piece which is the smallest and then we'll probably be about time at that point to pull off the, the the two larger pieces to wrap up and put in the oven to finish off for the rest of the night. So we'll see you then. All right, uh, we're back. The uh, brisket has been on the smoker for about four hours. So now it's right at that temperature of 160 that I was wanting at. So now it's time to uh, pull it off, wrap it, and then stick it into the oven at 220 to finish off. Um, after we pull it off, the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to put it in an oven bag and then wrap it in two layers of foil. So let's pull this off here and see what it looks like.
Hey, do you want to help me uh, spread this open here? Pulling that brisket off. I don't know if you can see it real well on the camera, but it's got a beautiful mahogany color. And so we're going to put this in an oven bag and then wrap in two layers of foil and put it in the oven. Alright. And when you wrap these, what you want to make sure to do is to wrap it really, really tight. Those ends in. And what I like to do is kind of alternate how I wrap it. So we're going to go in the other direction. And that's it. So we're going to put this in the oven, and then next time you see me is when. I start to uh, inject the pork loin and then bring the uh, pork loin out here to put on the smoker. See you in a bit. Alright, so we're back inside. Um, I've, got, I've had the uh, pork loins out for a little while just so they can kind of warm up from being in the fridge overnight. Uh, so now it's, um, it's about 10 after 3 in the morning, so it's time to get these out of the foil and start injecting because I want to get these on the smoker probably you know, 415 ish, give or take. So go ahead and unwrap. I'm going to do one to show you and then turn the camera off and do the rest of them. And then we'll get these out of the smoker. So I'm going to go ahead and unwrap one. And again, I double boiled these yesterday after I put the rub on. And I've had to put rubber gloves on, so hang on just a second, let me get some gloves on. Okay, now I got my rubber gloves on, so now we're going to handle this meat, get it out of the foil. We're going to put it in this pan here so I can get it injected. I'm going to, like the brisket, I'm going to inject it um, fat side up, so that way I remember the orientation for when I put it on the smoker, because I want to make sure to keep fat side up. So here's my uh, injection. Again, it's a lot of things in my injection. Uh, if you want the recipe, just shoot me an email and I'll be happy to send that to you. I'm going to stir that up a little bit. It's been sitting away a little bit. Stir this up. And again, just like with the uh, beef brisket injection, I recommend after you uh, make it that you run it through a a strainer like this so that way you remove all the particles that are going to clog up your needle uh, and making the injection just pretty much impossible so you want to make sure you run through the strainer. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. And, and again, you just kind of get good coverage. Put your needle all the way in and as you're squeezing you want to pull your Needle out right as you're squeezing so you get good coverage. I probably made way more injections than I need for these pieces, but I'm the kind of guy that I always just want to make sure I have, I'd rather have more than enough than not enough, so it's kind of hard to make more later. Kind of get in the sides here.
Now some of the items that are in this injection fluid I'm using, there's stuff like orange juice, lime juice, lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, apple cider. Um, with pork, way, at least the way I like to do it, I like to do it on the sweet uh, side of things. For brisket, I'll, I'll go a little more savory, but for pork, I like it a little more sweet. Okay, that's just about it. And then, like I said before, I'm going to put a little bit more rub on it. camera, do the other three, and then we'll uh, be back again when it's ready to put them on the smoker. Thanks. Alright, well it's about 4.30, just about 4.30 in the morning, so now it's time to put the pork loin on. You can see I already done that. I got one more piece of brisket that still need to finish off. It's going to take probably about half hour, 45 minutes to get to 160 where I can wrap that one and put it in the oven. We'll go ahead and give it one mop before closing up. Close this door up and get her back to temperature. The, uh, the pork is going to take uh, about 40 minutes per pound. So with these things being roughly five pound loaves, you know, it's going to take just a, you know, a few hours to get those done. Um, obviously I'll come back and check them you know, every hour. Uh, give them a quick spritz. Uh, the pork, I, do, I don't do a mop on, but I do do a spritz of some juice to keep them moist and uh, keep the sweet flavoring in there. Um, so let me get the heat going back up here and we'll check in on again in about an hour. Oh, and one thing I did forget to mention, the brisket I've been cooking with hickory wood. Um, the pork, I'm going to change that up though. I'm going to, I'm going to do, I, I might do a little bit of hickory, but mostly I'm going to do apple wood for that. So I am going to switch that, the, I'm using the same smoker, but I'm going to switch the wood to be apple wood instead of hickory. See you back here in about an hour. Hey everybody, so it's about 7 o'clock in the morning right now. I'm getting ready to, I'm, the, Four points have gotten up to 140, so I am pulling them off to, to wrap them. <clears throat> of which they'll finish up over the next hour or so to get up to that uh, 165 temperature for done to some pork. This is what the fat's looking like. The smoke has come along really great. It's been a long, long, long night, but I think it's definitely going to be worth it. These things I think are going to be really good. I hope the church enjoys them. So I'm going to sign off, and I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video. And again, if you have any questions, comments, want a recipe, you can shoot me an email. My email address is Durham2022 at gmail.com. D U R H A M 2022.com. Have a good day. Bye. Hey, everybody. I just realized that I just forgot to show everyone what the finished product looked like. I got, you know, all excited to get this all sliced up and over to my church, but I forgot to put a picture of the finished product here on the video. So I'm going to. It's the next day. It's the leftovers. They're great leftovers. Uh, but I figured I'd go ahead and show you what the finished product looks like. 
And there you go. We got the brisket on the left, and you've got the pork loin on the right. It's going to taste just as good the next day as it did the day of. <clears throat> Hope everybody enjoyed this video. I'll probably plan to do more later, but this is my first, and so I apologize for any mistakes I may have made. But everybody have a good night, and I plan to enjoy some leftover barbecue for dinner tonight.